I want to, 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 to move on and, and, and just reflect a little bit on, on, on what we were discussing uh, yesterday and where we've ended up, where we've ended up today. And uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, thanks to the, the, the work of, of, of Martin, uh, just reprise some of the uh, uh, issues that we were discussing yesterday. And you know, the theme that, that brought us together uh, uh, <clears throat> for this meeting, but the theme of, of resilience. And those initial sessions that began with the, the cocktail on the Monday night, uh, where we started to discuss what resilient meant to us, and uh, moving on to David Nabarro's excellent overview, which I think has helped us with a message that we can start to take back into our own agencies about what we believe is important about resilience and addressing stress in, in rural, uh, rural society. We talked about, about, about how we were defining resilience, we talked about how it can be measured, and we talked about how it will be uh, practiced within our own organizations. Um, we we emphasized that we are talking about the inner resilience. I think that was a very poignant moment as David himself talked about his personal experiences of stress and resilience. We've all got them and I think as we learn and adapt to stress and resilience ourselves, it makes it so much easier to be understanding how then smallholders deal with stress and resilience in, in Africa, Asia and, and Latin America. And it's this ability to, to bounce back. And what we discussed though was not only to, to bounce back, but to bounce back with interest. Not just to get to where we were, but to get to beyond where we actually started off. If we're going to be able to say that, it means we're going to be able to measure where we are. We've got to be able to show with clear, measurable actions what we mean uh, by resilience. We, we started to have that discussion yesterday. We talked about the importance of the, the first thousand days in, in children's nutrition because we're talking about definitions of food security. And that ran through into the building block that, that I was in with colleagues on aid effectiveness, the issue of measuring results. How are we going to be reporting back to stakeholders, not only the other donors about results, how are we going to be reporting back to the other stakeholders in civil society and to member governments in, in partner countries about the results that, that we seek to achieve. A key to that is ownership. We keep talking about this mystic phrase, ownership. We have to be owning the results. We have to be owning what we aim to do. And here we're making the point that people drive their own resilience. We can't invent it. We can't invent it for them. We can't invent results for people. We can't tell them what they should be doing. Heavens above, as parents, how many times have we tried to tell children what they should do? Once your children own the result, they're away with it. Once our organizations know the results, once countries know the results, then achieving those results becomes much, much easier. So we were coming out with this idea that <clears throat> We weren't going to try and impose our ideas of resilience on, on others. We were saying we know that there are issues of conflict, of political crisis, of drought, of price instability. What we are trying to do in our institutions is help build that shield to help rural communities from the hazards and changes that are made. I think that's a very appropriate, a very appropriate picture. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're not going to reinvent the wheel, as we were saying. We're going to be doing arguably what we already do now, but we're going to be doing it better. We want to strengthen farmers' abilities for resilience. We talked about this today, strengthening capacities at country level. We want to strengthen farmers' abilities for resilience. We want to help them deal with rapidly changing environments. I'll come back to it later, but you know, Fiona and John's remarks were 2012, there's going to be some rapidly changing environments. We will now have to be able to deal with that. And if the context changes, yes, people are, are confronted with, with vulnerability. So what are we going to be talking about? We're talking about how, how smallholders be able to resist, how they're going to be able to adapt, and what are their, what are their, coping, what are their coping mechanisms. What are those coping mechanisms going to include? Perhaps the, the strengthening capacities, for example, of farmer organizations to help them deliver better services. If you're working with farmer organizations, 
to help them build better services, as you probably are in the Philippines, you're probably dealing with the private sector. You're not dealing with the government sector. You're dealing with private sector delivery of services to farmers. So, again, our coping mechanisms mean new ways of working, potentially dealing with the, the private sector. And as we heard from, from colleagues from from uh, Honduras, there are ways to involve farmers' organizations and understanding uh, how you will develop the technological programs to produce that uh, resilient, uh, resilience approach. So and there was, those were, I think, an, an overview of what we began to pick up on the, on the story for, for resilience from, 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 uh, from, from yesterday. We then began to move on to talk about uh, the, the World Cafe, the World Cafe sessions. This was my little card. I'm so impressed with this toy. It's Vorsprung Technik. For those of you that know the, the Audi adverts in the in the UK, how important technology is, and this has been a great technology. Martin's given us great technology, and here's where we took forward the World Cafes. The first World Cafe. And I'm not going to obviously go through them, but I think here we're beginning to see some of the knowledge sharing that went on during the, 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 uh, the, the World Cafe. And what's been a theme of this AGA is that we are becoming, as a group, quite practical and quite focused on what we can do. We're not being raising our expectations promising ourselves we will do wonderful things. I joined the group, for example, on the Commission on Sustainable Agriculture. Our discussion for 45 minutes was actually about communication and debate. It wasn't about how we will address issues of, of climate change. We simply sat down and talked about how we will communicate key findings to platforms and members. In other words, we understood a problem, we understood what we could do about it, and we sought to, to strive to, to reach, a, reach a solution. So kind of put, push. And I, I, I'm not going to go through, I want you to recognize the, 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 the groups that you were in. The second, we have the second set of, of world cafes. Again, we looked at, as we reprised this morning, the way that we do knowledge sharing. Nothing that Pascal said this morning cannot be done. Nothing that Pascal said this morning we do not do. Ergo, we know what we can do and we do what we can. I think, again, a perfect lesson for the way that the platform is beginning to, to, to operate. Again, marvellous technology. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you have ever been in other workshops when these things take three people and they go off in the wrong direction. Again, the, the third group that, 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 uh, that was working on, looking at some of the issues of agricultural research, and also uh, in involving small producers, uh, small producers to strengthen resilience. Two of the issues that came out in the in the uh, the working group this morning. But as as Nikita was saying when we discussed networking this morning, in transforming agricultural research for developing systems, how do we do that as a platform? We identify a core leader. We identify some key members. We set up a practical process of contact. And then we bring in some substantive content issues about asking the right questions, who's going to benefit from research. And as Mark was saying, this is going to lead us to a discussion of the role of women in research next year, or rather later this year, in, uh, in, in uh, India, I think uh, was said. So again, practical efforts of what the platform uh, can, can do. And then finally, looking again at those final sessions we had yesterday evening on the World Cafe, talking about where the gas was going, what smallholders and, uh, and, and livestock and pastoralism, what was possible for us to do. And we had, a, I think, a very, again, pragmatic discussion in the gas process. Again, being clear about what the expectations were. It is a fund. It is not a limitless amount of money. There are certain processes that are underway. It's not going to be a source of funding for everyone who wants uh, financing. And yet it is new. It's opening up financing to the, the private sector. And it's new because it's allowing civil society, partner countries, and others to be involved in the, in the decision-making the decision process. That concludes, if you like, that part of the, of the technology and where we, uh, 
where we were as of, of yesterday, which allowed us again this morning to start talking about what it is we, we want to network and what it is, what are the tools that we want to work with. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> Who said anything about being practical? <laughs> This, this marvellous drawing here, and appreciate the symbolism of, of, of the tree, of all the activities that you've said that we can be involved, in, involved, involved with. At the same time, it's highlighting, if you like, the roots, how it will, how it will, how it will happen. We haven't tried to prioritise uh, these particular uh, either uh, topics or modalities, uh, and I'd, I'd like you to. And Mark, Mike is going to say, turn them around, stop walking around, right, Mark? Um, uh, how we're going to prioritise? We haven't said how we're going to prioritise those at the moment. I'll come. Take the low-hanging fruits is, is is always the. Uh, It says climate change here, I don't know, but you pick a low-hanging fruit, you're very welcome. <laughs> what was coming through in terms, of the, in terms of the tools was, by an overwhelming vote, the WebEx got the, the highest vote for being the tool that you all want to be working with. Uh, the idea of, of working groups came through as a strong feature, and I think it was stressed that we're talking about not only a formalized working group, we're talking about quasi-working groups, groups that may not meet very, you know, again, the face-to-face the, the -face idea of, and again, as someone else, it was John, it was picking a specific task and setting yourself a specific result. In other words, again, an example of us being pragmatic. Uh, again, a good, two other issues came through strongly. One was the importance of the, of the update, the e-update, and how useful you are finding that. Uh, and I think a comment that came through from that, in that e-update, put as many links in as you can so that you can then use that e-update to look at other, other sites. And I was, I'm fascinated, still haven't quite understood how, that Pascal can trace who is forwarding these e-updates. And I'm so looking forward to finding some sort of league table of what I have or haven't done on this. But I think this is going to be, again, useful. And then, and then finally, I think we've, you've all given a, a strong signal that in, informal networking and exchange, like we've had over the last uh, day and a half, is, is, is terribly useful uh, for, for, for the way to work. Um, I, I think then uh, that's, that's led us into the, the sessions that we've had the, this, this afternoon on, on, on the building blocks. We've, we've pulled together a lot of those discussions already. And again, uh, I haven't got them on slides, but then Martin's been able, behind you on the, on the left there, we've got the four building blocks uh, highlighted. But I think in those, in those building blocks, some themes come through, and again, they're themes of, if you like, we can do it. We can deliver on, for example, the, the, the climate change group. And I, I was sort of rather touched to see Fiona deliver the presentation on climate change, because a year in, ago in Tunis, when we had a discussion about where we may put climate change on the priorities, and climate change wasn't seen as one of the top. I mean, getting out of Tunis by airport was pretty tough, but dealing with why we didn't have climate change on the agenda of the platform was probably even tougher. So I thought that Fiona delivered that uh, discussion this afternoon with, with relish and enthusiasm and, and absolutely with need, putting farmers first for the climate change agenda, mainstreaming uh, climate change into our data. In EFAD, we are not trying to come up with the silver bullet for climate change. I had a discussion with the EFAD president two days ago. We will not be looking for any magic bullets. What we will be doing in EFAD is saying, how do we get the message out about better farming systems and better agricultural practices into all our projects? How we will be dealing with differences in, in cropping patterns? Though, how we do mainstream the climate work into our day-to-day -day agenda? How are we going to link and learn from other Others, and that was great that we've had Sonia and the feedback from the, from the, the Commission. What was coming through from all of those working groups was also the way that the platform wants to continue to work. We talked about 
On the one hand, communities of practice for the climate change, the Agricultural Production and Food Security Group talked about exchanging inf uh, information. We talked about having special e-updates. We talked about having special half-day seminars. I think all of those ideas are interchangeable. All of those ideas we discussed uh, this morning in terms of the way we operate, and all of those ideas are practical ways that the platform can, can work forward. Again, we talked about practical things we want to do in, in the, the aid effectiveness agenda, sharing our, our results networks. We're all going to be challenged over the next 12 months in terms of what we deliver on the ground, reprising what John was saying earlier. We will be looking to get delivery on the ground. We're going to have to have methodologies to, to measure that and support that and report on that. We've begun to discuss how in the platform we need to change our, our uh, uh, <clears throat> how we need to support the way that we do, do the results. So I, I'd, like to, I'd like to sort of start to, 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 to wind up this, this, this overview by reflecting, and just before we broke for coffee, we were hearing, well, you know, 2012, it's, it's going, to be, going to be tough post, post Rio. I said, John's always thinking in the future. He was actually into August 2012, post Rio, what's going to be the situation? The whole scenario might have changed. Fiona's saying, yes, there are messages going out now that says you've got to be very uh, careful about how you project growth, growth rates on that. Having said that, what we've discussed over the last day and a half, without a shadow of a doubt, is very practical, tangible ways that a group of 33 bilateral and multilateral donors with a lot of resources and commitment from members behind them can take step forward to address some of the critical areas of climate change, of rural poverty, of stress, and the need to build in resilience amongst the smallholders. So I take every confidence that we can, we can move ahead of that. As I said earlier today, we've been working in a marvelously transparent and airlit atmosphere. I think that is synonymous currently with the platform, transparent and airlit uh, an, an atmosphere where we are very realistic about what we do and where at the moment we're being very transparent uh, and very concrete and practical about what we want to do. Now, I speak from the heart when I say that and I would very much want to try and commit IFAD to, to taking forward this agenda with you. And when I say the heart, I mean the heart. So what we're going to do in a few moments, in a moment I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Maria Pia to make a few some, the closing remarks, but we are going to ask you to carry out a little evaluation of the last uh, day and a half with the AGA. But at the same time, as I constantly tell you today, yesterday, and over the last 12 months, the platform is about its members and the members doing things. And without that, the platform doesn't exist. We must be doing the things I'm saying. I'm prepared to commit EFAD to do as much as we can. These little kisses are kisses and hearts you're going to give the platform. With this marvelous list, on the board here of the tree, I've got a whole little pile of kisses and hearts here. I'd like you to reflect what you would like to give your heart to in the platform. And I'd like you to consider, if you believe what you said before lunch, to write your name or the name of your organization on the little heart and perhaps put it on one of these topics. And when you put it on that topic, you're going to receive an email. You're going to receive... <laughs> A lot of emails about what we need to do. So if Frank Flood, I'm sorry to pick you out, Frank, likes, is interested in nutrition, put your heart against nutrition. And if Brian Baldwin thinks EFAD has a, an issue about results, I want to put my heart against the results. And on that basis, I think we're going to build up a core of, of platform members who, on the basis of what we said over the last day and a half, have concrete, practical, realistic ideas of how to work together uh, to take the agenda uh, of the platform forward. And with those remarks, I just, again, uh, offer my heartfelt thanks to BMZ, KFW, and GIZ for hosting this marvelous uh, AGA, to Monica and the team for doing all the arrangements, but to you yourselves, the platform members, for giving so much to this meeting, our flagship event, but also to your uh, involvement in the platform over the past year. Thank you all very much.